Hello all, welcome to the API testing tutorial uh, video. This is first part of the video wherein we are going to have a look at a couple of topics here. Uh, as I said, this is first part, there is going to be another video tutorial. So let's see what we are going to have a look at uh, in this tutorial. We would see what are SOA based services, which is known as service oriented architecture. We would uh, see there is something called SOAP, it is SOAP. Let me just correct it and then we have uh, RESTful services. We would have a look at why we need web services. We would have a look at the tutorial which is available online and then we would see how RESTful services uh, comply to the HTTP standards. We would have a look at what is JSON. We would see a JSON parser which is a parser for parsing JSON and converting, converting it into Java object. We would see a setup for the Jackson and uh, we would have a sample project. We would execute the project and we would see how we can verify the API response of a RESTful service. So let's begin with it. Okay, I was a little thirsty. Okay, so coming with the as well architecture, uh, there is one uh, nice tutorial, uh, well, nice documentation available on Wikipedia, which describes uh, what is SOA architecture. You can go through this, but let me explain you a, a crux of it. Uh, SOA architecture is a service-oriented architecture. So when we have applications which are built uh, surrounding services or service oriented architecture they are known as SOA architecture compliant uh, applications. So SOA architecture could be implemented in many ways. We have uh, something called SOAP which is known as service oriented architecture protocol. We can also use RESTful services. We can use RMI which is known as remote method invocation. Here we are going to have a look at uh, RESTful services uh, testing. But then before coming to RESTful service testing, we should also understand why we really need web services, why we cannot work without them. So there are uh, too many significant examples of uh, too many significant examples of using web services. First of all, uh, we have different systems in place which do not use same technology. So we may have a system which uses .NET and another system which uses Java. And when these two systems have to communicate with each other, it becomes difficult. And then there is no bridge available for these two systems to communicate. And this bridge is provided by the web services. So an application which is running on Java can use web service to communicate with an application which is running on .NET or any other uh, platform for that matter. This is one significance of uh, using web service. There is another significance which is the reusability. So using web services we can encapsulate some functionality on the, of the application and then it could be reused. A couple of examples could be uh, say, say you have uh, weather based applications. So these could be exposed as web services and could be used by web developers employing different platforms or uh, for example you have google so you we have all used google.com for search but there is also google api for search and this api could be used to directly make calls to google search engine and extract the search results without going to google.com so this makes it really uh, useful to uh, to provide uh, some reusable functionality for an application okay so let us uh, go to the restful services uh, i will not be co covering the soap here maybe in future sometime i would take up soap but remember that restful is becoming really popular nowadays because it's very simple to implement as far as soap services are concerned they follow loss of standards which which is a good thing if you talk about security say for example but it makes it really difficult if you want to write just a simple web service so we would have a look at restful services here now i would come to another tutorial of restful service which is available on netplus.com uh, this tutorial describes uh, about the restful services i would explain in a gist what it is so restful services are actually the uh, the word rest stands for representational stateful uh, services so this uh, representational state uh, actually represents uh, 
a state uh, of uh, some sort of resource in an application so this resource uh, could be say for example uh, when you when you do a get request we would have a look at that how can how we do that we all have been doing this but we may not have looked behind the scenes as to how this happens so when we do a get request we say google.com then we get the google.com page so this is a resource which is being served to us so this is what describes a state of a resource now when it comes to restful service so uh, they comply with http standards they, there could be an other protocols also but http is a very common protocol which is uh, used with the uh, restful services so let's uh, see a couple of uh, methods which are used in http and they are also used in restful services so we have say for example get request uh, get method not request which is used to get the resource as I was giving an example of google.com we may have put which is used to say for example upgrade uh, upgrade a resource so you want to say upload a resume on a website it could be a put request if you want to delete uh, delete a resource say you have your account and you want to delete your account then delete method of HTTP could be used and then you have post say for example you create a new account in that case you are generating a new resource and the post verb could be used okay okay now let us see an example of how this these http methods really take place so we'll go to the chrome and see how it works let's go to the old page of wikipedia let me bring up uh, chrome here yeah here comes the chrome and uh, chrome console has a tab called network i'll bring it up and now i'll refresh my page yeah, so if you see there are a couple of requests captured here most of them are get you really do not write in wikipedia until unless your content editor we just browse through it so almost all of them are all of them are in fact get request so let us see example of one of this request okay so this is one request Mm, it is 304. I want to see 1200. Yeah, this is 1200, uh, which means the success. So, this is a request URL for the Wikipedia, and the method used is get here. The status quo is 200 because request was successful, and we can see the page here. Then we have a couple of headers. There could be query string parameters and the response header. So, this is the preview, and this is the response. And the timing is another element which is available in the uh, Chrome network. Uh, tab, but the most important part is to analyze uh, the uh, the get request here. The similar way, if you have an application with you, and say for example, if you are submitting a form, if you bring up the Chrome console and then analyze the network tab, you would see that you would have a request method as post, and you would have all those form parameters being available here as uh, parameters. That would be the data which you would be submitting with a form. So this is how uh, get request work here. We are going to have a look at this in the uh, in the second uh, tutorial, not in this tutorial, but this is an important concept. Okay. Now let us see a JSON. Okay, what is JSON? You may have heard this word many times. So JSON is uh, known as JavaScript object notation. You could read about it in Wikipedia again. It's Wikipedia slash uh, wiki JSON. So JSON uh, can be used to transfer data between two systems. Uh, it it is considered uh, mm, okay. I think I cannot make a comparison with XML, but if you see in XML you have the closing tab and JSON doesn't come with a closing tab. We will look at an example of JSON uh, after a while, which is why uh, since JSON does not have closing tag, it makes it lightweight and its internet media type is application slash JSON. So how, how do we represent a JSON object? So here is an example of JSON object wherein we have a string first name, another string last name, we have a number age, and then we have an address object. So this address object itself has a string street address, city, state, and a number postal code. And then we have an array. So array is represented by the parenthesis here, the, the big parenthesis. And this has two elements. We have type, which is a string, number, which is a string again, another type, another number. So this phone number array has two values. So this is one sample JSON. So JSON is uh, something which is used largely with the REST services. As I said, uh, it is very lightweight and it is easy to parse it in comparison of XML. Okay, let us see one parser now. We would have a look at something called Jackson parser. This is a parser which could be used to parse JSON. So for example, you query a web page 
and this web page results in this JSON uh, JSON response and now you have to verify thing in this JSON so one example uh, one way to do that would be to use a parser and convert JSON into Java object and this parser is the Jackson parser so you can uh, you can read about Jackson parser on the wiki fastxml.com Jackson home but we would have a look at the most important concept which are needed for us here to be able to convert json into corresponding java object now if you are not familiar of java then i would suggest you to read about core java you really do not have to know j2e or j2me uh, when i was conducting selenium training my second and third video tutorial covers the topics of java which should uh, be good enough to understand this so have a look at second and third selenium training videos if you have not yet to know java Okay, so how, what do we need to do here? So we need to download a jar file, which is Jackson all. I'll just uh, show it to you. There is Jackson all jar. Yeah, this is the Jackson all jar. We just need to have this jar. Okay, and uh, after getting this jar, we can use Jackson to convert the JSON object into corresponding Java object. Okay. Okay, now let us have a look at uh, the project setup. So I had explained about the project setup for Java also in the Selenium trainings. Uh, so I hope everyone knows that. So this is a project which I have already set up. Its name is API testing. It has a package called SRC. Then we have something called com.pojo. Pojo stands for plain old Java object. And then I have another project, uh, another package called com.selenium test. So today we are going to have a look at only one class here, which is Jackson API test or Java. So let us see what we are actually doing here. So we are going to use Jackson parser to convert uh, the JSON object into corresponding Java object and do the verification. So the JSON example, which I'm going to use here is the same, which we had a look at uh, in Wikipedia, okay? And then we will see how our objects are set up. So let us have a look at uh, how the parser works. So this is our test where we are testing the API attributes. So what we need to do here is we first have to create an object for object mapper. So object mapper comes from the Jackson uh, API, Jackson library, the jar file which we downloaded. And uh, I have, yeah, I have already included included it here, which is Jackson hyphen all. So you will have to uh, include it in your class path after downloading the library. So first we need to create the object mapper object. And after creating this object, we need to pass the JSON file. How do we do that? So after having gotten the object mapper, we will invoke a method called read value. And to this method, we need to pass two arguments. So what are those two arguments? So these two arguments are, one argument is the file object and another is the class. Now, which class is this? This class is the class to which our JSON object will be converted. Let me repeat it. This class is the class to which our JSON object would be converted. So say uh, the JSON example or Java is the file which we are going to convert here. So we also have to create a corresponding class here because uh, Jackson or Java doesn't know what kind of object it is going to get when it parses JSON example file. So this is a JSON example file and now we have to create corresponding Java objects. So let us see how we have done that. What I did here was I created a class called user.class. So let us see this class. This is the class. It is available in com.pojo. So let us make a comparison here. So we have uh, a string first name, last name, age, and then address. Address, remember address is itself an object and phone number is an array while other elements are just a string. So if we have a look at user class, we have a string as first name, last name, age, address itself is an object and phone number is an array. So we have used list here, okay? And then we have plain getter and setters, that's all. Now let us have a look at the address. So if you see here, address object has four fields, a string, city, state, and a number called postal code. So let's go back to user.java. Let's see what we have in address. It should be the same thing. So we have uh, four, uh, three strings for a street, city, and a state, and one number postal code, and then we have getter and setters. And now we have only one field remaining, which is the phone number array, which is list in our class, phone number. So let us have a look at the phone number class now. Yep, it has two, uh, it has two instance variables two strings type and number which represent the type and number in our phone number array 
okay now let us go back to our test so this is our test yep so we are done with creating object mapper we are done with reading value from this file so if you see this test file is available in this uh, test data folder for me and uh, this is the user dot class which we had a look at and when we do this we are going to get an object for user dot uh, user and now let us see what we are asserting so we are asserting that age is equal to 25 otherwise there is something wrong and we are asserting that phone number array should be of size 2 so if you look here the age is 25 so our test should succeed and the phone number array is of size 2 so our test should succeed so if I execute it now let me run it. It, it is a uh, test ng test because I have annotated it with test. Again, if you have not seen the Selenium tutorial, please have a look at those. We discussed about test ng also there. Okay. So run as, run as test ng test. Yep. Oh, let me run it once again. Yep, so test is over. Okay. Okay. There's no failure. Uh, let me debug it and show how this works. Yep. So here we have it, the control has come to user. So if you see here, the user object has all the, yep, this is our user object. Yep, so the age is 25, so our test works. And then we have four numbers, which is an array. And we have two phone numbers, rest everything is null. And this is another reason why our test works. So let us go back to the java format yep i think i can just stop it because we know test already works okay yep so this is the sample project which we used here i would upload this project uh, after the second tutorial because there are a couple of files which talk about the jersey client we have not seen the jersey client uh, today we would see jersey client in the next tutorial so this was a simple example of uh, using uh, Jackson parser to convert uh, JSON object into Java file and then doing a verification in the Java file. Now, this is a situation, uh, this, is, this is a scenario which we may come across, say for example, you may not have direct access to API. So we would uh, see in the next tutorial how we can access API directly. But in there are times when APIs no, are not exposed to the external world and you may not be able to call them directly. So you may have to navigate from one page to another to come to a certain state and then you could invoke the API. In that case, we can use the Selenium to navigate to the pages and then come to a page and see the JSON response extract the JSON response from the page, convert it into Java object, and then use that object. Yep, that's about it. So we had a look at uh, SOA services, why we are using RESTful services and why they are most popular, how we can uh, pass a RESTful response which is in JSON, and do the verification. That's all. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you like it, please click the thumbs up on the YouTube uh, video. Thank you.